Chris Stevenson and Bruce Garriock of the QMI agency here at our downtown Boston Hotel, Bruce, where we're watching the Eastern Conference Final between the Boston Bruins and the Pittsburgh Penguins and heading into Game 4. I think a lot of people are feeling bad that this series is looking like it's over after seeing a tremendous Game 3. 96 minutes of hockey where we saw some great performances. It was kind of the hockey I think a lot of people envisioned before this series started, the two best teams in the Eastern Conference. And unfortunately, the Penguins didn't show up for the first two games. Do you see anything as being the key? Why the Bruins have been able to nullify the Penguins as well as they have? Well, I think coming into the series, Chris, everybody thought that the Penguins were the better team, that they had more talent, that they had more offensive skill. But I think what the Boston Bruins have done in this series is they've defined the word team. Uh, they've been good in every aspect. I don't think they've out-hit the Penguins, but they've had the puck a lot, so they haven't had to hit much. What the Boston Bruins have done that the Ottawa Senators couldn't do is they've cut down the Penguins' speed. They've been good through the neutral zone. They haven't given Crosby and Malkin many chances when they have gotten chances. Tuka Rask has been there to make the saves, and I think you're right. I think in a lot of ways this series has been disappointing. It was a great Game 3, but in a lot of ways this hasn't been it what anybody envisioned. Everybody thought this would be a war. You know, and the, the Bruins now up 3 nothing going into that Game 4, but not all sweetness and light for them. Talk about the great performances. Malkin was fantastic for the Penguins, but the Bruins lose Gregory Campbell, great fourth-line guy, great penalty killer who has his leg broken by a Malkin slap shot while killing a penalty. Uh, it's going to be interesting now to see you know, what that means for the Bruins. That fourth line has been so big for them and was critical for them, really, in beating the New York Rangers in the second round. Yeah, around here they call it the Merlot line, and you, you look at those guys and they have been great for them. The one thing is the Bruins do have many options to put in there. The question is, how are they going to react to those options? The guy it looks like it's going to be is Casper's Dogmans. Well, he hasn't played since May 1st. Another option is Jay Pandolfo, who I don't think has played in a couple of months. I mean, whoever you put in there is going to have faced some inactivity here and it's going to be tough for them to get up to speed in a series that, that in a lot of ways is about speed. And I think, you know, one of one of the things is the Bruins do have a lot of great depth up front and options. You know, one of the big things is they got five centers. I think they could put Chris Kelly as the center on that third line and move Peverly to take uh, Campbell's spot on the fourth line. So, like you say, a lot of lot of options. We'll see how it all works out in Game 4 on uh, Friday night, and we'll see if the Boston Bruins are capable of delivering the sweep to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Well, I think that the, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the only hope they have is they've got to go back to Pittsburgh anyway. They want to take the Boston Bruins with them. <laughs> Can they do that? I, I don't know. We'll find out Friday night for the QMI Agency in Boston. I'm Chris Stevenson along with Bruce Garriock.